Welcome and thank you all for coming out today. It, it really means a lot because um, while this is happening all over the country, there's a lot of gatherings around the country, but it's really important for us here in Marin to show that we, we are concerned about this issue and that we will want Marin to take a stance on having a zero tolerance, not only for racial, racial profiling, but for any kind of violence in this community because uh, people should be able to, it is a God-given right to be able to walk freely in this country and be here without being impeded by uh, authorities and not being subjected to harassment and even violence and even death just because you're here and your color of your skin is something that people are not familiar with or choose to be comfortable with. So again, I want to thank you all for being here and hopefully this is just the start of something that uh, we could get going here in Marin where we could really get the institutions in Marin, particularly uh, the county and the, uh, the law enforcement to begin to look consciously at how they begin to pr protect the rights of everybody in this county. So again, thank you for being here and I'm going to let Dave Escobar, wherever he is, he's going to do a song for us. Uh, thanks for coming everybody and um, I really appreciate um, your attendance here this evening. With regards to the candles, obviously the, the obviously, um, obviously with the uh, the candles, it's still light, it's still it's still bright out. And uh, but the main thing here is that we're here gathered um, with with that uh, with that light in our hands. And so, uh, considering the weather, the windy weather, the fact that it's still light, uh, we're still going to have a candlelight vigil. If you'd like to, you know, turn your candles on, fine. If you don't, and if it's too windy, take them home and reflect upon what occurred here today. Um, think about this young man who um, who was killed in Florida. Uh, let's think about not only him, but the many other people around the world. Um, one last thing before I sing, and I got I got asked to sing. I, I thank uh, uh, John and the rest of the folks for asking me to sing. Um, one of the elders, uh, native elders, uh, indicated to me one time that um, at one time hum at, at one time humanity, the the law of the Creator was written in our hearts, and there was no need to actually write the law down. As time went on, uh, human beings began to forget that natural, those natural laws. And so there was a, the process of writing them down to help our minds remember, to tell our hearts what to do uh, came about. And the elder said that uh, humanity has gotten to the point where now even the, there's, there's not even a, a heart to, to write the law upon. Uh, nor the, the mind to, to, to recall that law. Um, and so we're in a, humanity's in a, in a particularly uh, state of crisis. Um, um, and basically it boils down to loving one another. It boils down to love. I'd like to ask uh, Lord Amherst to come and speak on behalf of the Latino community. On behalf of the Latino community in Marin, I would like you to know that we are very sorry and deeply disturbed because of the crime committed against Trayvon Martin. A life ended way too soon by a misguided individual protected under a crazy and outdated gun law. Let's ask our legislators to divorce themselves from the National Rifle Association and from the gun lobby across the country. Please do not forget that we are in this together. Yes, we are united in the fight against injustice. We cannot tolerate any kind of discrimination. We must live in a hate-free zone. We were all created equal, and we are equal regardless of the color of our skin. 
we have the same capacity for love, for peace, and for understanding. We are all human beings that deserve to be treated with respect. My skin is brown, but that doesn't mean that I'm a thief, a murderer, or that I am a threat to society. My skin is brown, but guess what? The color of my blood is red, just like everyone else's. Yeah. We must stop judging people, stereotyping, insulting and discriminating against each other. Hate crimes equal ignorance. Hate crimes equal ignorance. Ignorance is the mother of all injustice. Comments from the media, like Fox's analyst saying he's could kill Raven as much as Zimmerman did, they only feed hate and more discrimination. We cannot tolerate this. It is in our hands to stop this behavior. We are empowered to stop this kind of behavior. We have to educate ourselves, educate our children to ensure that we live in a healthy society that provides equal opportunities for all. Let's unite our thoughts and prayers and demand justice for Trayvon Martin. Thank you. I'd like to ask uh, Lamont Bishop from Senator Leno's office to come and say a few words. Thanks, Dave. It's really great to look out and see all of you standing here uh, this evening. To, uh, to so it's great to look out this evening and see everyone standing here to celebrate the life of Trayvon Martin. Uh, it's it's a really, a really tragedy. It really is. But you know, Trayvon Martin could be any one of our one of your kids, your nephew, your son, or even your possible daughter too. Um, we got to remain the village that we are and come tighter and support our youth and protect our youth from injustices that are happening in the world. Uh, last Thursday on the Senate and the Assembly floor, several members of each house donned hoodies to stand in sol solidarity with the movement that's happening across the nation. And please know that Senator Leno and Assemblymember Huffman, whose representative is here, are doing everything they, can, everything they can to ensure that injustices like these don't happen in California and to eradicate a racism and end discrimination. Thank you for letting us be a part of this. Thank you. And I'd like to now uh, invite Paula Pilecki from uh, Spectrum. Thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me. I'm very grateful to be here with our colleagues at Great Grassroots and the Equity Action Committee and everyone who's here. Thank you all for coming today. I'm, I'm Paula Pilecki. I'm the Executive Director of Spectrum LGBT Center. We promote acceptance, understanding, and full inclusion for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender people. We've been here in Marin County for 30 years. And uh, I'm, I will read to you a letter signed by 27 national organizations representing thousands, hundreds of thousands of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people throughout the country. It's a national call to action to stand alongside Trayvon Martin's family and friends. The tragic killing of Trayvon Martin is a national call to action. Our hearts go out to Trayvon's family and friends for the loss they have experienced. We stand in solidarity with them as they demand answers and justice. We represent organizations with diverse lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender constituencies. Many in our community have been targets of bigotry and bias. We have a great deal of experience grappling with the role bias plays in violence crime against our communities. We well know the stories of young people targeted for violence just because of who they are. Rashwan Brazel, Lawrence King, Ali Forney, Dayani Jones, Brandon White, Matthew Shepard, Angie J Zapata, Sean Kennedy, and countless others. Trayvon's killing is a wake-up call to the enduring cancer of racism and racial profiling. The pain his family continues to endure transcends communities and unites us all. Every person, regardless of race, religion, sexual orientation, or gender identity, 
must be able to walk the streets without fear for their safety. Trayvon's killing is tragic, and the stark reality that racial bias played a role in his death has alarmed our nation. Questions must be asked, answers must be sought, and justice must be served. We join our voices to the chorus of so many others to demand that local and federal authorities find those answers. We stand in solidarity with Trayvon's family and friends as they seek justice for his killing. In the time, timeless and tireless words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Thank you. Now I'd like to uh, invite uh, Noah Griffin, who's our our keynote speaker for this evening. No. Thank you, David, and thank you everybody for being here. As long as you are a person of color, we all live in the hood. And it's something to remember. Why are our children always given the detriment of the doubt and not the benefit of the doubt? Why is there always a presumption of guilt rather than one of innocence. My father was the first NAACP president in St. Petersburg, Florida between 1933 and 1938. He worked with Thurgood Marshall, equalized black and white teacher salaries. He was run out of Florida in 1944, and his partner with whom he worked, Harry T. Moore, they placed a bomb underneath his home Christmas Eve, 1951. And my daughter just read about it in Georgetown. Just last week, she led the Trayvon Martin March from her chapter of the NAACP uh, there in Washington, D.C. I think back over my years, I'm a little older than most of you. I remember the Emmett Till murder. I remember his mother coming to Third Baptist Church. I remember her saying, I have no more tears to shed. You know, the, the name Trayvon Martin, if you take the T away, is Trayvon Marin. If it can happen there, it can happen here, it can happen anywhere. When I moved to this county in 1975 to first begin to work and, and lived here in 1981, I worked the night shift at KGO Radio. I lived in San Anselmo. I had to leave at 12 in the evening to get to work at 1 o'clock. In every one of those little cities that I went through, San Anselmo and all the little ones, I was stopped at one time or other. I had to put on a coat and tie during the day and go to each and every one of those police departments and say, I live here, I work here, I don't expect to be stopped. One time when living in Tiburon, when I delivered my children to my divorced wife an hour late, I had the sheriff's department waiting for me with batons out. I told them I, these kids are not abused, neglected, or abandoned. I don't expect to ever see that happen again. It happens here, it can happen anywhere. The price of liberty is eternal vigilance. There's no way that we cannot speak out about what happens in Florida, what happens in Mississippi, what happens in Georgia, what happens in Marin County. We have to be vigilant. It's ironic that this, uh, this gathering is happening one day after the 44th anniversary of the death and the assassination of Martin Luther King. It also is ironic that this is happening Easter week. And to that end, I would like to share this with you. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble.
Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? with Trayvon Martin, the killing of him, and I don't usually wear a hood, but for me it was symbolic and an identification with him and his death that I wear this hood today and continue to be reminded that not only Trayvon but so many others continue to experience racism enacted against them and killing and uh, total torture against them. The Marine Peace and Justice Coalition is here today among many other groups. Move on. Uh, other groups that I don't know. The church, the First United Methodist Church is here. Other churches, other groups are here today to stand in solidarity with Trayvon Martin and with his family and with uh, action against racism in our country. Thank you. And if anybody else would like to come, it's open right. Yeah. <clears throat> We're not here to bury or memorialize Trevor Martin. What we're here to recognize is his rations that runs rampant. Dr. Martin Luther King said, violence multiplies violence. What I say is, guns don't kill people, but people with guns kill people. And right now in our nation, I was reading the paper that they're blaming Obama for people buying more guns. This is crazy. You know,
know, we have a society that is so enthralled with being secure that they create tremendous insecurity. They look at people walking down the street and they say, I don't trust them, they're younger than me. I don't trust them because they have a hood. I don't trust them because they act differently or they dress differently. Every person in the station is born to the law, but not everybody understands that or makes any type of effort to assure that we'll all be born to the law and that we treat each other with love and kindness. Love thy neighbor. And just don't always follow. a lot of people with a gun. There has to be strong gun laws, and right now the gun laws have weakened tremendously. And unfortunately, we have a Supreme Court that backs the idea of having people own guns so they can shoot other people. Unfortunately, the, the logic doesn't make any sense. We have a justice that says he's an originalist. He comes somewhere before the Magna Carta when people didn't have any rights. That people needed those rights, and they fought for many years to have those rights, and we have people that are stamping on them. Thank you. Anybody else? I just wanted to add to that as we're standing here and we're, we know that a lot of this is about racism and racial profiling. But we also know that the man who had that gun, concealed, loaded weapon, legally, a permit, should not have had that. And I think we all need to really look at our gun laws. We need to look at the three, the bottom line, that has created the laws that we have. If you don't know what ALEC -A is, the NRA, and so forth, if you don't know who is funding these various, 30 states have this standby ground crap. Trayvon Martin is dead in part because of this law. And I think we really need to become more informed about what's going on in our country, figure out how we're going to stand up against these gun laws and against these very strong gun lobbies. And that the bottom line should never, should never allow murder. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm a speaker with the uh, Marin Spectrum and San Francisco Speakers Bureau, a member of the LGBTQ community. I'm a, gen a transgendered person. I am a whole spiritual loving being. You are whole spiritual loving beings. Trayvon was a whole spiritual loving being. When we look at each other and hold each other as whole spiritual loving beings, it will be our first step to supporting safety and peace in our communities. Seeing each other as loving, spiritual, whole beings every day, every moment, every interaction gives us also the responsibility to not allow for slurs, negative comments, injustice. It's got to be a way we live every day. The laws don't matter if we can't talk to our neighbors. The laws don't matter if we allow slurring and oppression to go on constantly. So thank you for this moment. I am so glad that you are all here. And I please ask of you, reach out to someone you don't know, touch them, let them know that you are a whole spiritual loving being. This is how we will get to peace. Thank you. Anybody else before we close? I'm not anybody special, um, but I'm a mother. And Trayvon Martin could have been my son, as he could have been anybody's son here. And this was just such a terrible thing to have happened. And he was stalked and he was murdered. And I don't know, I just, I just felt that very very much in my soul, and I think that that's why we're all here. That's all. Um, I wanted to say I normally do wear a hood, and it's because I'm cold. 
And um, I suggest that's why the young man was wearing the hood. There's no other reason. And um, besides to get him some Skittles. And, and I think he was also not only targeted because he was black, but because he was a young man. And I think young men um, are stigmatized no matter what their color is. And uh, something to consider um, looking after our young men. Okay, again, I want to thank you all for braving the cold and being out here on, on behalf of Trayvon Martin and the uh, issue that we're bringing to light, which is racial profiling. Uh, before we actually close, you turn to the person on your right and say thank you for being here this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Future gathering. And if you didn't get a chance, there's a, I think there's a petition going around. We're trying to... Uh, get some traction here, Moran, around trying to get uh, this county to be zero tolerant with regards to violence and to end racial profiling. So again, I want to thank you all for being here. I uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, like the gentleman just said, that, that I mean, the lady just said, um, Trayvon Martin could have been any of us, relative kids, son, next door neighbor and everything. So we really need to take that to heart and realize that uh, particularly for a, a African-American male, is that that's just how um, this country is and this, is, and, and this county is not uh, absolved from having that type of behavior here. So we hope that you will sign the petition and I hope you will join us in other actions as we try to eradicate racial pro profiling not only here in Marin but across the country. So again, thank you all for coming and turn to the person on your left and say uh, a prayer for small prayer for Trayvon Martin, just to say, I lift you up. Thank you.